So whenever we look up, no matter what you see there, whether it's a crocodile or an old woman or whatever it is, whatever you see doesn't seem to change at all. Right? Whenever you look at a full moon, the patterns or the patches that you see on the moon seem to remain exactly the same way. But you know the moon is like a ball and it's rotating all the time. Then what should you see? Some days you should see one side of the moon and some other time you should see a different side. But it turns out that we always see, every single person on the earth always gets to see only one side of the moon. Which actually evokes the whole poetic phrase, right? the dark side of the moon. How does there exist a dark side of the moon? Now what do we mean by this dark side of the moon? So you're looking at the moon and one of my friends sees a crocodile on it. I don't know how his imagination is wired. I, I, see, I see nothing. I see like little, little patch there. So different people see different things. But whatever somebody sees, that's exactly what they see. In other words, on a full moon, the moon appears exactly the same, right? That patch or whatever you see is exactly the same. And if the moon is rotating, we should see the other, other side, right? That's what I've been asking you. So do we see only one side of the moon? Then what happens on the other side? Yeah, it's an interesting question, right? In fact, ancient people, lot of, for a long, long time, we've been thinking that there are aliens living on the other side and things like that, simply because we can't see on the other side. Now, what I mean by, that's called the dark side, but what I mean by the dark side is, not that it's the unlit side. Yeah, this is something that can be a little, little, little tricky. Yeah, not the unlit side, not the side that's not lit by the sun, but the side that's always facing away from us. So it's dark to us. It's dark as far as the earth is concerned, not in any other sense. It's not even dark, it's actually the unseen side of the moon. That's what we mean. Yeah, the side that's facing away from us. The side doesn't like us. So there's one side facing us, but there's one side that is just always facing away. Now I want you to take a little time to exercise your brain with a little question. How could this be possible? Right? In what way must the moon move around the earth for this to happen? And as you exercise, because the brain's pretty much like a muscle, right? The more you think, the better you think. So I want you to take your time off to think how the moon must be going. And if you already have a visualization, that's, that's probably right. Let's imagine this. Let's say there's a friend of yours who's standing right in front of you, right? He or she can turn how much they want, but they have to stay in that same place. Let's say that's true. Now, what I want you to do is start looking at them. And now as you're moving, say, let's say, let's imagine a circle around them. Let's draw a circle around them and you're going to go around in that circle, right? But as you're doing that, you're always going to be facing them. So while you're going, what you're doing is that you're continuously facing them. Now, what will happen if you do this? What would happen is that you could have anything written on your back, right? It doesn't matter. You could have anything written on your back and they would never be able to read it no matter what they do. They could turn around, they could do whatever it is that they want to, but no matter what they do, it's only one side of you that they can always see, your face. So you might have, you know, you might have anything written on the back or you could have anything that ha that's happening on the other side, but they would never ever ever be able to see that. That's pretty much what's happening with the moon. Right? There's one side that's always facing you, but the other side, never. But if you're really keen, the question you'll ask is, okay, let me say this is true, but why is this true? How does the moon know to go exactly in that way? Because how is the moon going? It's going as if, if there's a ball, and if you have, if I tie a tie to the string, right? So that I'm like, it's facing me. Then if I rotate the ball around me, what would happen, right? One side of the ball will always face me as I'm going like that. Yeah, as if I turn it around, it'll always face me, but the other side will never know. So I could write a little message over there and I would never be able to read that until I stop this ball from rotating and turn it around to see it. Yeah, that's what's happening with the moon. Now you'll have two questions here. One is, how does the moon know how to do this? Isn't it a bad coincidence? If you think about it, that's exactly what it should be, right? The moon is actually revolving in the right way and rotating in the right way such that it's always facing you or the earth. That's what I mean by you. Isn't that a crazy coincidence? Yeah, if you think about it, how does the moon do this exactly? Is it very close or is it exact? It's exact. So the moon's basically doing this. But the moon can't think, how does the moon exactly doing this? How does it do that? So you could think it's a coincidence, but if you really dive deep, you'd be fascinated to know that it's, the moon is not alone in this habit of facing the planet. This Pluto's moon, Sharon, which does exactly the same thing. In fact, more than 50% of the moons in the solar system do this. In other words, they always face their planet. So they, this is not a coincidence, right?